Welcome to I Am Concordia, the show that explores Concordia University from the inside out. I'm Vanessa Contwa. And I'm Giovanni Bertolo. Coming up on today's show, we give you the details on the CSU election results and controversy. We let you in on a healthy alternative to your lunch routine. And we break the silence on Concordia's fraternities and sororities. Well, it's been a tense election period at Concordia, but students finally elected a new government last night. The Unity Slate won with 3,965 votes, more than 1,000 votes over Go Concordia, who ranked in second with 2,950 votes. The Impact Slate came in third with 393 votes. Aude La Liberté was there last night. She joins us now. Aude, I understand that some trouble took place. Yes, that's right, Vanessa. As you know, it's the student tradition that the results are announced at Reggie's Bar. But things took a turn for the worse this year when students were kicked out before the results were announced. Let's take a look at what happened. This was the scene last night outside Reggie's student bar at Concordia's downtown campus. Earlier in the night, hundreds of students had gathered here to hear the results of the Concordia Student Union elections something they do every year. But when bouncers asked everyone to leave shortly after 3 a.m., students protested. There was some push and shove when the bouncers started physically throwing people out. Jeremy Loveday says he was slapped and pushed out of the bar. And then I got grabbed by the neck and pushed out. And then, uh, in the past, students have been allowed to stay until the results are in, sometimes until 6 in the morning. Students here say they have a right to remain at Reggie's because it is a student space run and managed by students. Like illogical because this is the night we know the results. That's what this is all about. And now we're being told to leave without knowing anything and it's just like... Students ended up gathering on the terrace to wait for the results. They came in about 45 minutes later. Students here say what worries them the most is that the process is being impeded without a viable alternative. You know, it made it, it, made it, it, made it law. When the CEO stand, stood on the bench or on the bar at Reggie's and their hoarse voice yelled out the winners of the election, that, that was next year's student government. And now it's like a handful of us out here. Uh, it's just kind of a whole different situation. It's, it kind of sucks and I'm cold. So. Yeah. Ode, any idea what happened? No, not yet, Vanessa. I spoke with the CSU and they say they're still trying to figure out exactly what happened. But the mood among the students is that this is a move on the administration's part to undermine students' right to access the space. So we'll continue to investigate and bring you more on that in the near future. Thanks, Ode. There was even more controversy when the final results were announced. Here's what some of the party leaders had to say. Unity! Woo! That's what we're bringing to Concordia, putting the unity back in community. Done. If I had lost in a real democratic vote, I would applaud unity and I would say you've done a fantastic job and you deserve to be in office. But until that can be proven, I don't feel a great sense of loss other than for the student body. But Summer is right around the corner. For some students, that means a lot of free time. Reporter Damon Vandalin found out how some Concordia students will make very good use of their summer. This year, Concordia officially began its volunteer abroad program. This summer, students will help in villages of northern Uganda. I had a chance to find out how Concordians are making a difference in people's lives wherever they may travel. It all started in 2004 when a group of students went to Uganda for the first time. Uh, don't break your back. Now the project has grown and students from all faculties can join the Concordia Volunteer Abroad Program. Sienna Anstis is a first year student who is leaving this May. We'll be kind of drafted out to different organizations in the area. We'll be building houses for them, painting, um, taking care of orphans, teaching, a little bit of everything. The Central African country of Uganda is home to more than 28 million people. The Concordia students will stay in the northern region of Gulu. In recent years, Uganda has suffered from AIDS, poverty, and civil war. There's two million refugees living in the north, and um, it's one of the biggest crises in the world, and nobody's paying attention to it. You know, everybody's paying attention to Darfur and all these other areas, but we have five times as many refugees than they do in Darfur, and nobody's talking about it. The 70 students who are going to Uganda this summer must prepare themselves to experience a very different culture. I've never been to an area that was really poor, so that'll definitely be interesting. Although the trip will only last eight weeks, the organizers hope the effects will go far beyond this program. 
these students come back and they end up spreading the word. A lot of them have come back actually and raised substantial funds to fund th you know, projects that they really loved in Uganda. So what we're trying to do is get as many students as possible to go there, experience it, come back, try and um, convince their MPs to make Northern Uganda an issue in politics. In Montreal, I'm Damon Vanderland. It's no secret that university students are often on a tight budget. So when it comes to lunch, they might turn to fast food restaurants for a cheap meal. But for Concordia students, they have a healthy alternative, the people's potato. Ava Kropman has more. At the people's potato, tons of vegetables have to be cut five days a week. 30 volunteers make sure that there are no hungry students left. This vegan soup kitchen at Concordia University started in 1999 to offer well-cooked meals for people who are on a limited budget. They serve soup, a stew of vegetables and mixed fruit. Only organic products are used in order to protect the environment. Vegan food doesn't contain any animal products so that everyone can eat it. It's more respectful of people's diverse dietary concerns and religious concerns. People's potatoes serve over 400 meals a day. It is free or you can give a donation. Sometimes the line already starts two hours before the serving begins. You know, it's right on campus, it's healthy, it's vegan. I mean, I didn't know anything about vegan before coming here, but it's a nice philosophy I'm learning and that's good. Another option for students to get vegan food for a reasonable price is to go to Le Frigo Fair. This little shop is part of the Concordian Food Collective and sells healthy and fair products. Health conscious students can buy vegan products like different kinds of rice or fresh brewed coffee for less than you would find in a regular grocery store. The shop makes sure the products are fair traded but contributes to safe living conditions for workers in the third world. In Montreal, I'm Eva Kopman. Rap artist Cardinal Official gave a free concert at the Loyola campus Wednesday night. The concert took place at The Hive, where more than 100 people showed up to watch him. The CSU organized the concert as a going away party for The Hive. The student space undergoes renovations over the summer and will reopen as a student bar and cafe. Fraternities and sororities have been around Concordia for over 40 years. In fact, they existed even before the two campuses became Concordia. But a lot of Concordia students don't know they exist. I found out why. Toga! 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 Toga parties, binge drinking and promiscuous sex. Those are some of the things you think of when it comes to fraternities and sororities. But frats and sororities at Concordia University are quick to tell you that the stereotypes are as manufactured as the movies. Uh, I think it's a more of an American stereotype than it is a Canadian stereotype. It becomes our stereotype because we all watch American movies. Uh, so we associate fraternities and sororities with a certain type of people. Muammar Macron Zeta Prime Minister Mark Pulowski has been a part of his fraternity for close to four years. In that span, he has grown accustomed to the stereotypes that have been hurled in his direction. On the other hand, fraternities and sororities do a lot more than drink and party. Zeta Tau Omega President Julie Gerardin and her organization have taken part in numerous charitable events. We have a skate -a for breast cancer research every year. And we have uh, something else called Comedy for a Cause, where we sell tickets and the money goes towards breast cancer again. 
The fraternities and sororities at Concordia have been around for almost half a century. They are one of the only organizations that are not funded by the Concordia Student Union. So how do the associations stay afloat? Through the Gedengi Lounge, also known as the G Lounge. The popular student space is run by the Interfraternity Council, which serves as an umbrella corporation for all the fraternities and sororities at Concordia. It's been over 30 years since both the Loyola campus and the Sir George Williams campus converged to create Concordia University. A lot of changes have been made to Concordia along the way, but the Gedengi Lounge has stayed intact. Being the longest serving student space available to the Concordia population, the G Lounge has been the only source of income for the IFC and its associations. We throw the Gedengi Lounge, we run it by ourselves, we have no money. From the, we, we, we start with our own money, our own float, and we still have money to gift our organization. Not a lot of money, but a decent amount. Spreading their message and reaching out to potential new members has been a challenge for the organizations over the years. They have been forthcoming with their standards and practices, but when discussing pressing issues such as initiation, the members remain tight-lipped. We get new members. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> as I said, I must play the fifth. I can't. <laughs> In Montreal, I'm Giovanni Bertolo. Stop motion animation is one of the oldest forms of film animation and is still popular. Stop motion animation movies like Corpse Bride and Chicken Run have been very popular with audiences. As reporter Ava Kropman tells us, some creative Concordia students are learning the technique. These five seconds of film took over five hours of work, because in stop motion animation you have to shoot every frame individually. This traditional form of filmmaking is being taught at Concordia University. In this class, the students start from scratch and will finish with a short movie. Once students find an idea, they build their armature to create their own character out of foam or clay. After building their puppets, they have to animate it and shoot a short movie from 30 seconds up to 2 minutes. It's very interactive. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun working actually with your hands, not just sitting in front of the computer screen. Every puppet has their own style. Students may have a puppet dance around or sit at the dining table. In the mid-90s, new computer technology started to replace traditional stop-motion animation. But that doesn't mean it doesn't exist in the movie business anymore. A lot of famous movies like Wallace and Gromit, A Corpse Bride and The Nightmare Before Christmas are made entirely out of hand-built puppets and sets. Eric Goulet explains why it's still important to learn how to animate without a computer. So that's why stop-motion animation's got this great advantage that it forms your mind to better understand, you know, like the performance. Compared to computer animation, where all you need to do is set, you know, like a keyframe at the beginning, keyframe at the end, that's it, that's all. The computer will extrapolate between the two and it's going to do your animation for you. In Montreal, I'm Eva Kopman. Hey, that puppet has moves. Yeah, more moves than I'll ever have. Oh, don't be so hard on yourself. You have a lot left to learn. On that note, thanks for watching I Am Concordia. I'm Giovanni Bertolo. And I'm Vanessa Contua. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, that back was really good. Yeah, yeah. that's colorful. Yeah, you won't love it.